The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 935. Tuesday's been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron. <laughs> what did I do with my name there? At Sorgatron on the social medias, wherever those may be these days. With me is the one, the original recipe, Riz. We bring the boom. <laughs> That's what we do. Okay. We bring the boom. <laughs> Are you we reading that, or are you sleep booming? I hate it when I. Boom it's been a weird sleep. week. Sort yeah, of, it has okay? been a strange week. <laughs> As you see There's a child everywhere. that came out with a big show that had the longest walk for the big show <laughs> since like WrestleMania. We, we will get where it. he had to take that giant. Oh, here we go. Like here we go. <clears throat> that giant cart down to the ring. <sighs> <laughs> um. Also with us is our guest for this week. <laughs> Joe Dombrowski is with us hey! in the studio. We're catching up. The couch is eating him already. Oh, I love this couch. Sorg, you've done this 934 times before, and you have not lost your plucky, awkward, lovable charm. I got to appreciate Is that this. how you describe what this is? <laughs> That's I'm an adjective guy. I got to have something for you. That's what we got. Yeah. I love it when Asylum told me I smile like I'm full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he must have that thought, stuck with me. He, he must have thought you were a promoter. <laughs> I don't know what he thought we were doing. We're just sitting on two chairs in Clearfield trying to do an interview. And he was like, yeah, like how you smile in there. I know you're full of shit right now or something in the interview. I'm just like, what the hell? I'm just trying to be pleasant, sir, on screen. But, uh, you know, this is this is why... This is why I've got no other TV gigs. Uh, but you, uh, you, of course, uh, Joe Nebrowski, for those who don't know, we can go down the Rolodex of uh, the... the, 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 the as long as the 1,001 holes or four holes or whatever it is. Joe Dombrowski, international voice of AAA, as well as MLW, and, and now JCW, apparently. Whoop, whoop. I'm glad I prepared you with all those caroids for all your chuckle Otis. <laughs> we'll get into that in that experience, because I'm sure it, it was an experience. Oh, I loved it. Absolutely. And I think you got. I think your voice got to attach some some pretty high level memes over the last couple of weeks as well. <laughs> <laughs> high level, high energy, Man. Uh, high voltage, if you will. Highly illegal, <laughs> highly offense. illegal, highly questionable. Oh, it must be the Jigolo Championship Wrestling. <laughs> oh, you're not even at the gathering. Oh my God, <laughs> that's your dream. One day, you and I will walk the gathering. Uh, not, not hallways because it's outdoors. <laughs> it's outdoors. <laughs> we're we're going <laughs> to the outdoor hallways the, of the parking lot of yeah. that area. <laughs> the, the unkept field of the, the gravel hallways of the gathering of the juggalos. Oh, shit. Anyways, this is a wrestling man. No, I already did that part. Uh, that. Let's get into some of the wrestling stuff of the week. We talked about it a little bit. There was an AEW pay per view uh, this past weekend. Riz, you watched good bits of it. We watched some of it here at the studio. Uh, There's actually two matches that were very, very good that we were watching. Yes. But we were definitely uh, in, in studio. Uh, somebody revealed to us that they are currently watching this entire Star Wars universe because they've only watched the trilogy and Phantom Menace up until now. So uh, we kind of went into a guidance session for a while there for a couple matches so i might want to go back and rewatch them um but anyways very good uh, uh highlight for me had to have been kyle fletcher and will osprey riz yes yes 100 percent, 100 percent. that was the match of the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. perfectly done perfectly done like the the only bad thing about that was the was that I think it was that match where they did the tombstone off of that, mm -hmm. off of the off the stage mm -hmm. and onto the on the steps. The you mean? Yeah, on the steps. Was yeah. that the, was off that the ring? On yeah. the steps. Yeah, like that. That was scary. Mm -hmm. And like I, I, I give them props for doing that. Just know that I would I I I was curled up a little bit. Like I was. I was scared. I, 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 you know, I have a kind of a, you know, 
Joe, we might have talked about, uh, you know, I, I kind of talk about a lot of like, I don't, I, I, I will get squeamish, but I won't internally believe something until I see somebody that actually hurt kind of thing. Like I, I have trust that they know what the fuck they're doing when they do something that looks like that looks like absolute murder. And that looks like a terrible thing to do to your neck. Right, and I, you know, and I get that. I don't know the science of how it works, but you know, like I, I, I it's insane for sure, mm-hmm. and and everything like that. But man, some of those, yeah, some of those, you're just like, I don't understand how. Well, I mean, I think that's the works. magic of it in some ways, is right. Yeah, absolutely. When, when when you're in the moment, you don't know. Yeah. And, and in the moment, I right. don't want to know. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the more out of control it looks the more dangerous it looks the more reckless mm-hmm. it looks mm-hmm. uh the more we as a people are entertained it's like you know you're, you're not going to turn away when you're passing a car crash on the highway of course i don't want to see anybody get seriously hurt i don't want to see anybody lose their livelihood i don't want to see mm-hmm. anybody uh sit at home for for a period of weeks or months but it's that it, it's that living on the end of a lightning bolt as dusty would say right <laughs> it, it's that danger factor mm-hmm. that keeps you coming mm-hmm. back because you think you know and maybe you hope you know but you're never 100 percent sure absolutely I, and that's you know that's the thing it, it, and i feel like some of the moves that look the nastiest sometimes are the safest too sure like so somebody explained to me that, like not all of them obviously but but some of the ones you see on a regular basis that's why you see them a lot you know probably because they're just part of the repertoire right um so but yeah i think that's a classic and i think we have a lot of guys in AEW that are of that style you know and that and that you know, I hate to look, use the term break, breakneck pace, but you know, that's kind of, and that's what, th- that's what they're known for. And that's why they're trying to differentiate themselves at this point, you know? Um, mm-hmm. so no, it was, it was, it, it was an incredible show, but uh, still that was a five-star match. That was, absolutely. And then this 100%. is another show that had Ricochet and T- uh, Takesha on it. Um, mm-hmm. another great match that they were telling a lot of really interesting stories with John Moxley and Orange Cassidy. Um, you know, this, this the only, again, I kind of, the ending of that uh, main event, mm-hmm. that the whole cluster, fuck. The everybody has to get their shit in. Main everybody main got event. the shit. That, everybody got like their the, shit. The uh, raw attitude era, literal car crash ending yes. uh, that we yes. did, which I I actually honestly loved it because this was I did not. If you expected Orange Cash to just walk out of there with the with the championship with the storyline that's been going like a month at this mm-hmm. point, like one ish pay-per-view or so has been building you're building you don't just beat the nwo at the next pay-per-view you know what i mean like that and right. i feel like that's what we're building right now is a, a um, right they're, they're 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 building their own bloodline. yeah they're building an nwo nwo style threat um and you need to carry that through you know and we're now we're kind of at the uh uh we don't trust sting phase of that story. I think if that translates, yeah, I, I, Joe, I, I, that feels maybe we're pre sting. Maybe yeah, we're, I, I, I mean, it, it all depends on where the end game is, right? Man, I, I can't mean, wait for crow orange Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> what they've done with orange Cassidy is, is so great though, because you've established him so well mm-hmm. as being this lethargic, lazy kind of, um, you know, millennial slacker type of thing. But he steps up and, sometimes. And, and he steps up. And, and and you know, a lot of people don't get Orange Cassidy. But when I worked with him in uh, Portland right before AEW, uh, he summed it up for me perfectly when he said Orange Cassidy is a guy who's obsessed with winning, but he hates pro wrestling. So yes. when you put that into context, there, there becomes a, a, a bit of, a, a, of sense of, of understanding and relatability to a lot of younger people out there that, that maybe some of the older folks don't understand. So when Orange Cassidy gets that blood boiling and fires up and says, no, this place means something to me, like, you feel it, and it means something to you because nothing else got this out of him mm-hmm. uh, in, in the past four or five years, but this does. This tells me this right. is important. This tells me I need to keep watching. Um, and the other thing that's great is uh, that entire time, in the background, you got Darby Allen, mm-hmm. and you got yes. Darby doing the car crash thing, and, and Darby repelling from the ceiling, and who's literally doing this thing? Oh yeah. my god, he is. Thing thing. <laughs> and and with but with reason because yeah. he's mentored by Sting. Yeah, so so it ties together. But it's like I know this game plan. Yeah, t- to me, Darby's your guy. Yeah, Darby is the one that's going to wear this company to sleep because you you know from his promos, from his interviews, from just the way he carries himself, Darby would die for this company. Darby would give mm-hmm. everything he has for this company. The only reason he is a national television star 
is AEW because the other place would have never let him be himself authentically. He, he yeah. literally came from his car, yeah, you know, and not no home to a signed contract so, and on television. So, yeah. but but the passion that he exudes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is the perfect guy you want on the front lines in that fight. Mm-hmm. And Darby and Moxley, you know, it, it, it's your money match. Ever mm-hmm. since, um, you know, Darby lost his his title shot earlier this year for Grand Slam. You know, mm-hmm. now we're watching that ascent back, and the fact that he will crash his car, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> jump off the sun, whatever he's willing to do yeah, yeah. To, to, to get there. And um, it's a beautiful thing because the, the one big reason the NWO faltered um, is after a while, nobody was as cool as the NWO. Yes. Except for maybe Sting. And, and you had some limitations there. But uh, as cool as Mox is and as laid back and like dangerous as he is, um, Orange Cassidy, Darby Allen. There's so many people that kind of fit that same vibe that can take that to him and take that to the group. Um, and I, I, I don't think we've seen the last of Brian Danielson in the story either. So Mm-mm. there's a lot of moving parts here, and I think it's it. We're still simmering to your mm-hmm. point about where mm-hmm. we are in the timeline. You know, maybe we're not at. Do we trust Sting yet? Maybe, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe we just saw who the third guy is, and we're building Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I think we got a lot more legs to this, and I'm intrigued to see where it goes. And it was it was it was it was a car crash. For those who don't know, it was from an the actual end, head-on car crash. It was yeah, okay, literally. it led to a car crash. But but it was like a everybody was involved post match. Uh, Christian comes out and tries to cash in. Hangman kind of comes out and spoils him. Uh, then Jay White came out to because he's yelling Pac because he's still mad at Pac uh, because. And, and, you know, both limping from their match, Hangman and Jay White, right? Um, you know, and then into, God, did anybody else come out before they left? And, and, and oh. you know, was there anybody else that I missed there? Uh, so they just set up like three different storylines there out of the end of that show. Uh, Claudio into, came back. G- what's that? Claudio. Claudio and? I think Claudio attacked Jay White. Okay, Claudio attacked Jay White. Yes and please. Um, yep. And... Then we had the little little car wreck, steal a valet car, get out of there stuff. Um, confirmed, yes, Darby was driving that car. Because fucking of course. <laughs> I, I bet he didn't even put a seatbelt on. I bet no. he didn't. I bet he didn't. He was texting while driving. He was texting while driving and says, yeah. Tony, do I go yet? Tony, is it time? Tony, Tony, you want to get Tony, a sandwich after this? the car's coming this? really close to It's like, please, Tony. But, can I stop now? No? Okay. Tony. Tony. He was actually driving with his feet just to see if he could. Yeah. 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 We'll get the camera later. Just like we got the CM Punk footage a year later from Survivor Series. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get the, the, Dar- the Darby no hands video coming out here soon. Turns out there was a GoPro in the car because of course he's a skateboarder. Um, <laughs> where's that? Where's that angle? That's the GTV I want to see. Um, <laughs> oh, I was God. playing Superman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, he is buddies with Tony Hawk. So if we can pull some of that Tony Hawk Pro Skater soundtrack out, I'm here for it. Um, Also from the AEW pay-per-view, there was a very divisive, but I would say a generally positive situation. They kept saying, here was my thing. I was sitting there, uh, uh, watched most of the pre-show, and I said, listen, if you're going to bring somebody in from outside of wrestling, you need just can't. I feel like you can't. Should be like, and here this guy is because I'm like I don't know who the fuck this guy is. You know what I mean? Like you know, usually it's like, hey, here's so and so from USA Networks something something. And you got a little fucking timer thing, and you're telling me the Costco guys. And obviously this is a TikTok thing. Um, I was like, you need to primer me and not just drop this on a random rampage, of, of like a weigh in or something like that. It's like I understand that crowd is showing up, but don't make us feel like we're out of the loop, please. <laughs> Listen. Some of us olds who are on TikTok but not in the same vein, <laughs> like we have it is just like there's a thousand channels, there's a million um, verticals in social media, and there's no way I'm going to know everything that's fucking going on. <laughs> you know, um, you go to a VidCon where the YouTube stars all collect, and you probably don't watch any of them, yeah. but there will be a hundred thousand people for that one person. It's crazy, right? Um, 
So, and then of course, right before they did true primer, what exactly? I was literally pulling up the video and watching the like the the main video. I'm a Costco guy, of course. I'm such and such eating chicken on a stick or wherever the hell that was. And it's a chicken. I'm halfway sword. through the video, and they started playing it on the TV right before the match. I'm like. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> um, but um, so uh, what was named Big Justice uh, was a was a part of that, and apparently is a twenty year wrestler who has who's wrestled around here. Joe, I found out. I pulled up his cage match. Okay, he wrestled in like two thousand two in Punxsutawney for it looks like a joint show for APWF and NWA East. Okay. Slash NWA. All three logos were on it. It was crazy. Yeah, I know. We can come back. I book. I actually messaged one of the promoters and said, hey, did you know this guy on TV right now has some history with with your company? You know? So, um, but... Uh, I him back and I can see the Rizzler and, you know, throw uh, him out the building. Yes. Anyway, either way, brought a lot of attention as half of the people sitting here were like, I don't know who the hell this guy is. This is a crazy, like, this is stupid watching Twitter, blue sky, whatever going, this is stupid. And I was like that entire arena, 10,000 people know who the fuck this guy is and probably bought a ticket for him. You know, like it works, you know, and he's relatively local. He's a 20 year vet. Apparently he has not wrestled much in the last 15 years, but, but uh, he, he had enough, Know how mm-hmm. to get through it. He and, did with mm-hmm. a broken foot, apparently. Yeah, not what a worker. Not embarrass himself. Not embarrass the nope. business. And, nope. and bottom line is, is uh, 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 you and I can have our opinions on it because we're not the target audience. No. Uh, honestly, because because we're already there. Mm-hmm. Um, QT Marshall is such a, such a great foil for something like that. Um, he mm-hmm. QT gets it on yes. such a level that, that the internet will never understand. Yep. But 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 he gets it, gets it, and um, anytime he gets a moment in the sun, whether it's here, whether it's uh, <clears throat> his AAA run last year, whatever the case is, I'm all for it. Um, but you know, there's always been a history of using celebrities, and mm-hmm. sometimes celebrities mm-hmm. on the fringe. Like you know, I'm sure there's plenty of people who don't watch football and didn't care that Kevin Green was on WCW or. <laughs> You know, whatever the case is, all the way back to to Mr. T and Cindy Lauper, mm-hmm. and and you know, uh, or as Chandler was pointing out that uh, Vanessa Hutchins from uh, High School Musical was on Raw last night, apparently. Okay, well there you go. Yeah, and, that's true. And, and you know, I bet she didn't even have a broken foot, so I'm not even going to press by her. <laughs> but the, the the fact is, is that there's no such thing as mainstream America anymore, right? Mm-hmm. All entertainment, yeah. and all media is so segmented. Yeah. So yeah. you have to find a way to cross promote. You have to find a way to get eyeballs on you. And you don't have to like a TikTok uh, a celebrity or an Instagram influencer, but you can't take away the reach they have and the value that they bring mm-hmm. with their built in audience. And it's always been about getting people who aren't watching the show to sample it. And if you come for the Rizzler, and then you stay <laughs> for Will Osprey. Welcome aboard. You know, I mean, we're glad to have you, uh, Riz. Obviously, we have some uh, brand confusion issues around this match, and the yeah. bell ke- timekeeper for this. Um, I was concerned about the Rizzler's ability to keep time. I didn't know uh, uh, if, if the Rizzler was qualified. The Rizzler was also what eight years old. Or something. Probably. I think uh, it had to be a digital watch. It couldn't be like a wall clock. You can't read this. Exactly. No, you hit not yet. So we did. So we did. You know, Riz. This has been going crazy. Every time I try to mm-hmm. plug in your name on social media, I end up getting Nyla Rose because she's like the Resonator or something. Yep. So I decided. Not, Nyla's. I was going to point out, Nyla. You're able to use my name. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not going to argue with Nyla. No, 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 no. 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 But we did uh, put out a statement this week because I thought it was necessary. Uh, uh, over, you know, we're kind of seeing what's going on out there. And do we know anybody who can make this official? Make what official? The, the statement, sort of. The statement? The statement is official. It says official for immediate okay. release. That means it's official. And the set headline is literally uh, the Riz officially declared the original Riz, mm-hmm. which is true. It's very true. And we, and we have a completely official sounding that was not made on ChatGPT. 
No, no, no. Don't just uh, don't 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 bother the. Uh, we layered it down. Orders. It's fine. It says, you know, the Wrestling Mayhem Show has been my proving ground. My home turf said the Riz. Completely real quote. For over a decade, I've been delivering top tier content, blazing trails, and letting everyone know what it truly means to be the Riz. It's time the world recognizes what I've known all along. There you go. And so now with the rebranding, uh, uh, see. Not only a tribute to his storied history, but a bold move to cement his iconic status for the future. future? With your expect your same cutting edge insights and hilarity we've come to expect and love. No. Um, so now you are now the original Rez or as an alternative, the original recipe Riz. Okay. So I don't like all of that, like, you know, um, Praise? You don't like all the praise, praise Riz? Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, that's the word. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like that though. I like that the the, the logo there for you, Sorg. Okay. Um, I do. I do like how we tried extra crispy at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that got weird. It got weird. It looked like Crazy Steve was coming to town, and mm -hmm. I know it, it, he, he's like it was weird, um, but. I I know, like for the past what two years now, You've the name Riz You've has been co-opted. The, the, the name Riz was thrown around uh, on on the TikToks and mm -hmm. on social media and all of that. Um, I knew that was coming. Uh, now I have to deal with a tiny kid in a Black Panther suit that uh, is now called the Rizzler. I, I missed the Black Panther suit. Was that part of the TikTok thing? Like they, that was they didn't come out. So, right? they had their own so here I'll, I'll I'll explain. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! There, and there now is the new segment called "The Original Riz Explains TikTok Trends to the Rest of Us." Because <laughs> this was actually mentioned in like a podcast with the Costco people, okay. Costco guys, Costco guys, I think. Costco guys. TM. I probably um, think I have to say it that way. Trademark. <laughs> uh, so they, so this was before Rizzler was in the Costco guys. Okay. So they were watching a video of him dressed in a, uh, black Panther suit with mask on and everything turning around and say saying like something like something to the effect of like black panther doesn't client doesn't need to climb okay you know? and that's how they found out that he was there and he, he and apparently they reached out to him and he so pretty much what AJ and Big Justice did was they they use their talents to influence the Rizzler. So pretty much they were the NWO and the outsiders. They were Hulk Hogan and the outsiders to the Rizzler Big Show. Okay. And they like took him and made sure that he doesn't go against them. By the way, every relationship for the rest of this episode needs to be boiled down to NWO references. From it, here on, like this is like I think we've kind of established this, right? So, it does. Okay. Anyways, well, it's out there. It's in the it's world. Riz, you had a phenomenal response from the Mayhem Nation about. I this. did, except um, for from except for one, one, who except for was one person. No, <laughs> except for one person. Uh huh. That if I can get this going here, hang on oh, one no. second. He, um, he apparently doesn't like, uh, or just just decided to call me by my first name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now that's going to be up there. All right, Bradley. That's there. All right, Bradley. Yeah, Bradley. He brought this on upon himself. If, if you can't you see tell yourself, by the Bradley. fuzziness of the picture, of Joe, uh, that is that is Bradley receiving a full on wedgie. Live on the internet, as we stream this show, 
from uh, and 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 not behind an extra paywall too. So, no, no, I mean, no. We get that out for free sometimes. So oh, that's something else. Sometimes Riz just pulls that up in the middle of business meetings and just yeah. says, "Listen, if we don't strike this deal, this is what's going to happen to you. This is what's happening. I know this guy, and if we used to know this that, guy. If you don't, if you Bradley, if you don't call me that name, if you call me my name, this goes down or up as it may be." Anyway, speaking of oh, people, yeah. um, speaking of Bradley and friends over at that support us and for some reason at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. That's a big sell. Thank you everybody that does support the show actually um, over there and we do uh, we go live a little bit early uh, for you guys over on Patreon and of course if you stick with us over there you'll see when we go to break and whatever we get into uh, behind all the graphics and videos we're playing for the live crowd out there in, in, the, in the publics uh, and of course uh, any post show discussion that we have will be a part of that feed as well and then you do get the pastry, Patreon pa- the pastry the pastry, pastry? Oh, that, yeah. Ooh, that could be something. I mean Thanksgiving is coming Thanksgiving up. Thanksgiving is is just two days away here. Um but anyways, thank you for everybody that does support the show. Our friends at the fan of the show level, Bo Diggity! Woo. Woo! As well as Team Hammer Fist, uh, the Tupac family, Bubba Brewer of the Triple B Podcast and APWF, Jason French at the Poppy Club level, uh, Dave Profop Honor, Rats in the Trench Coat, Tony Kincaid, uh, Matt. Uh, True Prince Pro, who I will give a shout out because uh, they did a a fun video that I showed by accident earlier, uh, previewing <laughs> actually the 880 Wrestling Show at Penn Brewery here on Wednesday night. Um, so thank Matt has been amazing putting uh, gifts out uh, now on Blue Sky. So please follow that, and I'm glad to see there's more wrestling content especially representing local uh, area wrestling here that we work with is uh, becoming a part of that, and Matt's uh, spearheading that, if you will. Uh, thank you also to the rest of our crew at the uh, Pizza Club level, The Riz. Boink. There you go. And as you can see in that wonderful picture, our manager, Bradley. You guys support the show, too, at patreon.com slash wrestling. He's still pointing. He's still pointing at him. Oh, my gosh. Joe. Are you booping his what are you doing? Yes, I am. Sorry. What is happening? Joe. Again, I got to take this down so it doesn't look like. Uh, so you don't forget anything. about it when you do your business meeting tomorrow. <laughs> that and it doesn't look or like fam- anything. Or like family with Zoom or something. In the way. <laughs> there you go. There we go. There you go. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Joe, how are you doing over there? <laughs> uh, good luck segueing off of that. I mean, uh, I've seen the stuff that you were working on the last couple of weeks. I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I feel great. I feel a lot better than Bradley did when that screenshot got. Oh, taken. I'm sure. Right I'm sure. Uh, let's talk a little bit. What's, I want to talk about physical media with you in a little bit, but let's talk about what the hell have you been up to? Um, what haven't I been uh, up to? You, we were talking about. What did you say? You were home thirty hours and twelve days, thirty hours or something and 30 like hours that. Thirty hours and twelve days from uh, whatever it was, October twenty first to November third, something like that. So you got attached to as referee George Ross last week, and we are actually scheduled to have Facade the Neon Ninja on next week to talk about this as well. You all somehow got attached to the JCW like lead up to Hallow Wicked tour that went yes. down, which was like the train of terror, the tour. train of terror <laughs> tour. And man, did I get some FOMO that all my friends were working the shows that I wanted to be at. Uh, but I, I just, I, I, and obviously, like you, I, I don't think you would experience much juggaloness other than what I have brought to our car trips. Sure. All right. And you got touched for the a good portion of this. I know some of the, guys, the NWA guys were a part of this, mm-hmm. like first on and stuff, um, uh, which was interesting. Um, and they were on YouTube for a while, uh, leading to some trailer pay per views and things like that. How, why? <laughs> Why, why, why why you why me why you why not me why did um why is this my fault somehow uh, i feel like this is my fault most yes things, mo- most things are okay but, uh I, I met violent J um in atlanta okay for mlw battle riot okay because he was he was one of the 40 uh men entered in that match Jeez. And God, he's been everywhere lately. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So this is back in June, and yeah. and uh, you know, you know how I do before broadcast. I always make sure to talk to the talent. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, so obviously I knew who Violent J was. Obviously mm-hmm. I knew ICP. I knew a, a very uh, a general version of kind of their career and their discography and, and their time in wrestling. The but, stuff I made you listen to in the car. Yeah, but yeah. but but I, I want to always have, a, 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 you know, a, a, a repartee with the, with the talent. So um, it, it didn't take me, you know, 15 seconds talking to Violent J uh, uh, before his passion for this business really bled through. And just like what an honor it was for him to be there and like how much it meant to him that him and Shaggy have been in every major promotion except for one at this point. Um, and, and that's, you know, uh, an untouched resume from somebody from their world, almost untouched from even from our world. You know, that's how crazy that is. But, um, you know, so I appreciated that passion from him and how happy he was to be there. And he appreciated uh, the passion for me and that attention to detail and mm-hmm. the fact that I gave a crap enough to, to actually speak to him and, and prepare. Um, so that started the relationship and, and we had talked, he, by the end of the night, he was telling me he wanted me uh, on JCW and, and it took us a few months to get it done. We had a, a false start here and there. Um, but the scheduling worked out. I got a, uh, call from, from, uh, a uh, mutual friend um, God, had it been two weeks before the tour of, uh, you know, hey, wh- what are you doing on all of these days? And, um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I did have, uh, you know, one booking I had to cancel to, to, to be able to do the, the, the whole tour because the travel just wouldn't have worked out. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, uh, 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 I, I started in Pittsburgh and then uh, I made my way to Detroit to meet the uh, van caravan. And then to we, join the train, if you will. Choo-choo. Uh, and, and then uh, down to uh, Nashville to officially start the tour. Mm-hmm. And then I think it was from Nashville to Birmingham, Alabama, then to Little Rock, Arkansas, and then uh, Columbia, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, up to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, down to Joliet, Illinois, and then across for uh, two days in Detroit. And that was the the Triller special and the uh, the Hallow Wicked uh, Matt Nacard. And... Um, it, 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 was, it was really cool for me because I only had to work 90 minutes a night. And really, for me, doing these three, four, five hour marathon shows sometimes uh-huh. and these long TV tapes, oh, these, yeah. these long triple manias. And don't get me wrong, I, I love them all or I wouldn't do them. It was a different animal. But they're so emotionally exhausting. It's yeah. like, yeah. like, I can be done at 8.30, mm-hmm. you know, or mm-hmm. 9.30, whatever time zone I'm in. And, you know, be back at the hotel and... and the crowds are amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, like if, if you aren't familiar with Juggalo culture, you wouldn't like this feels like it shouldn't work. Right. You have this like underground rock show and you have pro wrestling like mm-hmm. you're going to split the audience. Usually right? it's awkward as hell. You, usually when you see like yeah. an indie do it, yeah. it's, I, I cannot recall one where half the audience cared about the band that was there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or vice versa. If like a, yeah. a touring outfit wants to bring in wrestling, they wrestle mm-hmm. in the parking lot or something. People mm-hmm. just kind of, kind of, oh, look, well, that's weird, and then they move on. Yeah. Um. But no, they were into everything. I mean, uh, they hate poor Kerry Morton's guts. I mean, <laughs> that that kid's lucky he got out of half those places alive. Mm-hmm. And and Silas uh, Silas Mason, who it was Terry Gordy and Iron Claw, and he might as well be Terry Gordy now because he moves so well. And he's, he is, I love Silas. He is such a caricature. Uh-huh. Um, but they hated him and they hated Briar Wellington and they love mm-hmm. Willie Mack and they mm-hmm. love your Mac crosses and they love, you know, the, the neon blondes. Um, mm-hmm. They're so invested in everything and they're not a crowd that's watches wrestling every week. So they're not burnt out on everything. So a lot of the little things gets them, you know, seeing seven foot tall Baba Thunder, who, you know, unfortunately, you know, you may remember him as Commander Aziz or Daba Kato or whatever, but to see him in his element doing his thing, that's oh cool. Oh my God. I, okay. He was, he did look familiar yeah. in that clip. Okay. <laughs> to see, uh, uh, the amazing Grayson's do, uh, the new back seats and Grayson's worked for me in, in, uh, 2017. Welterweight wrestling, they were there. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, to go, to go full circle, and now they are mentored by Johnny Cashmere, and they're carrying on that Johnny and Trent uh, uh, spirit, you know, and that attitude and that vibe and the silver pants and the double team moves, uh, and to see them excel. And, and I always thought they were so talented when they were young kids, but there was just something missing, right? 
they were just guys. But now, um, with kind of the boy band entrance and kind of that, like, uh, you know, the, the boy band motif of like Tommy's the cute one and like JP's the bad boy and like Cashmere's the mentor. Like everybody's got a role, right? And then, you know, to see them work with Bang and Matthew. So I, I think the world over is an upcoming team in the Midwest. Um, it just works, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it's timed well. It's paced well uh, to where it, 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 it moves, you mm-hmm. know. And and you get in and you get out and you give them just enough. And uh, there's nobody on that card that's like anybody else. You mm-hmm. know, everything's different. Everyone's different. And I think what Jay appreciates and what Jay wants to do, he doesn't want JCW to be. Oh, that's that clown bullshit that's oh that's that's just icp whatever mm-hmm. like he's mm-hmm. not he's not trying to do strangle mania mm-hmm. he, he's trying to get jcw the respect in the wrestling community mm-hmm. that quite frankly i think it, it deserves you know and and is it rough around the edges yeah are there some some things said and done that maybe all parts of the audience won't appreciate yeah absolutely but a lot of areas of wrestling are like that now um Jay wants the wrestling community to embrace JCW just as Jay has embraced the wrestling community. Mm-hmm. And, and one step of that, maybe a small step of that, is, is having someone like me there mm-hmm. to be that voice and to string uh, uh, that continuity together. And, well, if you remember back when we, we streamed Lunacy three weeks ago, this happened, this happened, this happened, and that detail and, and pushing the Triller relationship and pushing mm-hmm. the social platforms and just being, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, the straight man. Mm-hmm. In a very wacky world, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I love the fact that they put me with Zach Amico, who always he's like he's a comedian. He painted up every night. He wore these just yeah extremely not, colorful garbs. I'm not familiar, and I saw one picture of you with him, and I was like, yeah. what? I didn't know the deal. <laughs> but he had he had some great one liners. He had yeah. some great zingers. He had me kind of you know uh, uh, trying to stifle my laughs under my breath, but like. I want that, or like they, uh, Manny Fresh was with us on on the Hello Wicked uh, broadcast. Like, I want that to be the voice of the Juggalo Nation. I want that to be the voice of of you know that type of community. And for me to be there as kind of a bridge, to tell wrestling fans it's okay to come on over mm-hmm. because you're going to find something that you like. Um, so even though, uh, again, on the surface, doesn't feel like it's my cup of tea, and mm-hmm. you know. Uh, were, were there were, were there things there that I wouldn't have done if I was running a show? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But that's okay because Jay knows his audience. And I think yeah, the, yeah. The, the important thing is twofold, okay? It's reaching those wrestling fans that maybe have a, a perception about it unfairly. Mm-hmm. And it's also making sure you're true to your roots because mm-hmm. you don't want to be, and especially in music, you don't want to be looked at as, oh, you're a sellout and you went mainstream and you yeah. went corporate. And that's not what they're trying to do. They're, yeah. They, it's not that we are allowed to curse. We are encouraged to curse. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, much like this is the podcast where I allow myself to yeah. say say fuck. This like this is the wrestling promotion where we allow ourselves to do this. Yeah, like, like that's that is the one one of the things that sets us apart, and I, that's okay. I, I think yeah. if I if I didn't start cursing, Jay might have fined me. I mean, that, <laughs> that's just the way it works. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, but it's the ability to have fun with it, you know. And and I was. You know, in my head, I, I took that as a challenge. Was, okay, I, I don't normally use that kind of colorful language. I leave that to the talent because I sure. think you know it means more that way. But if that's what you want in your presentation, okay, well, how do I use it sparingly, but in ways that mean something? Yeah, not just to say like, "Hey, what the f's up? Welcome to the show." Mm-hmm. But how do I put that attached to moments that'll make it mean more? Yeah. So I, I still took that as a challenge and, and one that I was glad to embrace. And if that's what the boss wants, it's what the boss gets. But uh, mm-hmm. I think Jay and I were very, very pleased with each other after that tour and um we both want to do more so uh i'm i'm officially uh, uh, down with the clowns and i love it no- <laughs> I, and i love that i love what, what you're saying about like the the accessibility of it because yeah. it's, it's definitely been you know i mean because like i've seen it over the last couple of decades pretty much at the gathering where the audience is the audience right is literally the audience and and so like it felt like it felt inaccessible because it's like these are all the inside jokes of people that listen to this music, mm-hmm. right? Like, and nobody else is going to appreciate this. And I love that it is. I don't want to say softened, but it, it it's that accessibility, right? Yeah, I, it hasn't yeah. softened. It's it's broadened. Yeah, it's broadened. Know? Yeah, it, it, evolved, it, if you will. Because I mean, 
my roommate most nights was Simon Gotch. Simon Gotch is not a juggalo, mm-hmm. as far as I know. Maybe he is when nobody's looking. I don't know. But he doesn't fit that motif either. No, you no, know no, what I mean? No, no, no. But uh, but it works yeah. because there's nobody else in the show like him. So yeah. we can talk yeah. about how he's a technical machine and he's a suplex master and all this type of stuff. But but yeah, I, I think, again, like they're, 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 it's not like uh, uh, JCW back in the day where like, okay, one of the guys is dead and one of the guy like one of the guys is a parody of somebody else you see on another show. It's, it's not. <laughs> I did see a promo where I think they pulled Evil Dead out of the trunk of a car, though. I'm glad to see Evil Dead is still a thing. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but and that's fine for like a comedy or a punchline or for a nice little sure. wink to the to the longtime fans. But 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 that's not what the main sales pitch is. The main sales pitch is pro wrestling, mm-hmm. just like it is anywhere else. And I would I would venture as far as to say to do it in these packed standing room only mm-hmm. um, underground rock clubs is mm-hmm. a hell of a lot cooler than you know thirty people in a VFW somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, you know, and I did say that that you know they they, they don't do uh, uh, parodies of 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 other people. Which is not entirely accurate oh, because yeah, of the one yeah, moment yeah. that we're going to talk about. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I'll let you take the reins. I mean, the the match you didn't know you wanted because I couldn't believe the other guy was on here too. Uh, yeah. One of the worst I'm going to tell you, it's Soul Taker. Soul Taker is part of this clip that was going around. Once upon a time, Once I couldn't a- say the name of that. Yeah, match. right. <laughs> and then uh, you know, and against cocaine. <laughs> So there's been a lot of colored canes uh, going around here, and this was the uh, oh god, he's he's just taking. By the way, uh, everybody yeah. that's like all the video providers, that is sugar. That is probably not what it's you think it is. Obviously, sugar. Oh, we're not getting on TikTok with this one. Uh, but yeah, so Soul Taker and cocaine, and this became a viral sensation even at one point pissing off a certain Rhodes brother uh <laughs> in commentary yeah. so um it's like this is the kind of this this is the wrestling is fun crowd sure you know? yeah. yeah and and, and, and that's the thing is like uh, i don't think anybody involved with that segment or that broadcast or involved uh, involved as a fan that watched it and enjoyed it should be surprised that uh, a Dustin Rhodes would say something, or a Jonathan mm-hmm. Coachman would say something, and they're well within the right here, to. Coachman. Yeah, uh, but here's the thing: uh, um, nobody uh, uh, responsible for that segment uh, put it out there because they thought it would unite the country and solve world hunger. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't the point. Obviously, it's there to get people talking. It's there to piss people off. It's, it's yeah. there to stir up emotions, whether you're going to laugh at it or be angry at it. So, you know, not to go all Eric Bischoff on you, but controversy creates cash. And and the, the thing with cocaine that a lot of people missed, unless you were watching the, the train of territory, is that there was a, a nine-day-long thread that got us to cocaine because the first night of the tour we saw the debut of Pink Kane. Mm-hmm. And and Pink Kane wrestled for a few days. And then, as the story goes, there may have been a cease and desist from a certain company in Connecticut. And that begets Yellow Kane, who debuts <laughs> the, that, later that <laughs> night. And now we got Yellow Kane, who, who works for a few nights. And then, well, Yellow Kane got popped on the C&D. He won't be on the, the Triller show. And, and then, <laughs> But what do we have, lo and behold? That's got to be cocaine. <laughs> And, uh, and, 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 and yes, I did the Vince line almost every night of that tour. That's gotta be, Mm -hmm. uh, for, for the introduction. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's fun. Listen, I, I'm not. I'm not here to argue uh, a legal trademark. Uh, 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 you know, it's parody. Parameters. It's right. parody. I'm guys. just. I'm just here to say I had fun calling it. I had fun having my voice on it. If you don't like it, if it's not for you, cool. Yeah. Fair, fair yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to the Juggalo culture. <laughs> but but it's not for everybody. But at the same time, yeah. But at, at the same time, um, that audience loved it, mm-hmm. and Violent J knows his audience. Uh, you know. Uh, was there harm done? You know, I, I don't think there was. I don't. Nobody's kicking uh, Glenn Jacobs out of Knox County. Um, <laughs> no one is 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 calling for ICP to flee the country. No one like. It's going to be okay, guys. There's more yeah. problems out there mm-hmm. in the world. Um, but yeah, I, I had fun doing it. Uh, again, would it have been uh, something I would have put on a broadcast? No, but uh, here's what you got. You got a cocaine match. All right, sign me up. I- I'm on board. Like, let's see what this is and what this does. And obviously, I mean, 
you know, uh, to Costco guys level saturation on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I, we didn't even have to write a song about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I love it. It's fun. I, I love, love that too. you're part of this world now. Whoop, whoop. This is great. This is great. It's like it, it's different. like um, just it's like you were uh, drawn to it from another area, right? Like a, like a like a like a what's the word I'm looking for? It's like this shaped a little bit a magnet. Oh. Fuck you, Riz. Fuck you, Riz. <laughs> Hey, I had to get one. I had to get one, okay? God, you're doing so good. I, See, I, I thought he was going the way of, of a cocaine reference and say I was chasing the dragon. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> That's, I don't know how Riz is on, on drug references. No. Um, well, I'm glad to hear about your travels. I'm glad that you've had this experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of many. Yes. I want to talk physical media with you, but first give a shout out for IndieWrestling.us. A lot of stuff going on, including uh including is audio there we go uh, what, what that's weird how it's in the middle but that's oh, okay yeah, just, uh, here, move, move to here, the side here, there you are sword here is here is tomorrow night it, it, live on indie wrestling not up wrestling there from, from we're not gonna be no, we're not gonna be outside though we're gonna be in the ballroom but it's still gonna look pretty cool somebody's gonna take video like this that's gonna look really really cool we're just gonna do do, do a classic live stream ourselves but no a lot of fun there penbury has been a great partner it's still in front of my face um and the other side, the other side. Uh, for 880 wrestling and everything uh so that's really fun I'm looking forward to that and also give a shout out to your friends we're not gonna be live streaming we're doing uh, live the tape for our friends for big league pro that's gonna feature i believe it's an nwa exodus um or midwest NWA midwest championship match between pretty boy smooth uh, defending against Donovan Dijak, which is going to be a be lot amazing. of fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see that one. So a lot of fun stuff going on there. And we do have physical media. I don't know. I put a picture out of all the DVDs we sent out. We had to catch up over probably a month of orders. But uh, uh, so we do have DVDs for about every title there, include our friends at Neo Pro Wrestling, who uh, have just uh, had a couple of shows that will be coming up online and uh, on DVD very shortly. Uh, so go check that out. Support some independent wrestling. Joe Dombrowski, physical media. You have been on a campaign that I don't think I've seen on social media push as hard as since since the main event. We're pushing for more to book more tag team matches. You cowards. <laughs> have you added your you cowards to your uh, uh, keep? physical media alive i i have not because i want to uh, uh draw in all types of fans okay even if you're a coward i still welcome your business what's going to be in the juggalo version of this promotion the juggalo version of this promotion <laughs> uh, Sago. i don't i don't want to say it there'll be profanity in it i <laughs> you're allowed to on this show yeah but you're not it's thre- not going to be the leading uh, 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 line but i'm not threatening uh, you <laughs> No, yeah, it's it's it, it, it's gonna be uh uh it's gonna be like you're you're throwing Fago out doing the Fago Ar- Armageddon only you're throwing DVDs at people. Ouch. Yeah, <laughs> duck and cover. Well, also with the Fago, ouch. Actually, <laughs> if they sometimes they don't flip the the cap off the entire way and you just get a full Fago at your head. Uh, so I have a friend that they just got just spiked in the front row one time. Uh, and you but, want me to go to this sort? Well, we're not going to put you in that part of the danger. He was also flipping off Shaggy for some reason. So, uh, so uh, weird thing for a fan to do. But anyways, um, no, but I mean, you, you've been, you know, you, I don't know how many DVDs I've authored for you over the years and everything. You still push it. And I'm like, Joe, there's this thing called the internet. You know, you don't have to think <laughs> as much stuff. And then this is an argument we have on our, on our side too. But like, should we still doing it? Is there enough people buying them? You know, things like that. But you've been on a really big, like I said, a really big campaign with things lately about this. Well, you know, and I, what I realized is it, it depends on the audience. It depends on the product, you sure. know, um, when, I first did Montreal Theory with you in 2013, which, if you're new to the dance, that what was... a wild time. That, oh, <laughs> we were so young, and we were I, so carefree. Somebody messaged, I don't want anybody talking about the Montreal Screwjob with Survivor Series coming up this year in, or in Canada, and I wanted to respond, Whoops. well, you can go watch the Montreal Theory over to do a <laughs> There you go, that's perfect. <laughs> but basically, to those that have never heard of it, it's a reimagining of the Montreal Screwjob. If Vince and Brett were in on it, how would that have worked? What would that have consisted of? What does that mean? How likely is it? Um, but when I put that out in 2013 with you, that was on a, a whim and a prayer. That was me uh, believing in an idea and thinking to myself, 
man, someone should make like a full length DVD out of this. Wait a minute. I can make a full length DVD out of this. Um, cause I'd already dabbled in, uh, shipping and duplication and things like that with, with all the PWO stuff. when I took over their merch. Um, if that had failed and, and, and the world had told me that's flop, you're not creative, go back in your cave, go in a hole and just rot. None of this else would be, would be happening. Mm-hmm. But the fact that I've been able to continually find where that audience is and figure out what they're interested in, um, brings that value to me. And, and, and to your point, I mean, obviously DVDs are nowhere near what they were before in terms of saturation, sure. in terms of market share, in terms of anything. Um, and my DVD sales dropped year over year, probably every year from 2013 up until 2021. And my digital sales increased. But the big thing that changed that is when we did the Brian Pillman Memorial Show Anthology. Mm-hmm. And it, to those that don't know, when Brian passed, Les Thatcher in Cincinnati did four different fundraisers for Brian's family that involved, it was the only event filmed that involved talent from WWF, WCW, and ECW at the height of the Monday Night War. And those shows had been mythical, right? You'd always heard about them and you'd never seen them unless you were lucky enough to see like Chris Benoit versus William Regal, something like that. You never see the full events. Um, I was able to bridge the gap between Les Thatcher and the Pillman family to get them together and get the rights straight to get an official release of this for the first time and sales skyrocketed. Um, I was moving 40 or 50 units a day for a period of weeks um, at, at $35 a pop when you include shipping. So you can imagine the dollars that are circling through, right? So all of this helps me realize that, okay, I couldn't, uh, uh, if I'm going to show and, and, and a 10 year old comes up to me, I don't know how to sell them a DVD of Bluey or something. Like, I, I don't know how to do that because <laughs> they don't even know what the hell it is. Mm. But if there's somebody my age or a little older or a little younger and it's something they grew up watching and it's something they grew up appreciating or always wanting to see or curious about, uh, that's the sweet spot right now. Mm-hmm. And, and what really helped is last year, I started building partnerships and relationships with a lot of content owners Mm -hmm. and it started with, um, the mirror Savoldi wrestling network, uh, 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 Savmar media, classic wrestling.net who own uh, a lot of the Dallas footage and uh, global wrestling federation and a lot of stuff you see out there in the wild that is not owned by a billionaire. Right. And, and, and that opened the door to uh, Todd Okerlund, Gene's son, who's got pieces of Detroit and the Poffo territory and the Herb Raymond's UWF. And um, just through that, it's, hey, we should reach out to Herb Simmons, who uh, owns St. Louis. And uh, the owner of Kansas City isn't alive anymore, but Harley Race's son, Justin Race, is here. Let's talk to him. And... Um, you know, uh, uh, Rock Parsons at the, at the Wrestling Legends Network works with uh, Dono and Son and, and build up this big spider's web of just interconnecting content. And so many of these places are online and they are streaming. But in my opinion, people my age or the average person that wants that type of footage isn't looking at streaming first to get their entertainment or at least get this kind of entertainment. To, to, to look blunt, maybe you'll be on Netflix. I'm on Netflix. I'm on Peacock. I got more hard drives and thumb drives and flash drives than I ever thought I would. I'm not <laughs> dogging digital media. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a certain level uh, of audience and age of audience and demo of audience that wants something to physically hold, that wants something that feels like a collector's item and not just mm. something you watch and forget about. And also, you're not at the whim of these, I, case in point, something not wrestling. I realized um, uh, about a year ago, I found for a decent price on Amazon, the entire, big fan, the original Ninja, run of Ninja Turtles. Okay. Like, Ten seasons, right? Yeah. Crazy. Like, I like 30 DVDs in it. Like, I'm like, I'm never going to sit down and watch all these. And then I get Paramount Plus. I was like, oh, the Ninja Turtles on here. I started watching it and realized, like, it's missing most of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, maybe you don't have that entire thing. Maybe things like, hey, if you got a physical copy of Muppet Babies, you got gold, yeah. right? Because that stuff's not getting That's out rare. anywhere because of the the things they did with rights and stuff back then that they were yeah. a little looser on that you can't get by with right now. Exactly. You know, it's, it's like, you know, 
yeah, you, you're you're like, oh, hey, you you brought up WWE Network is officially dying. Yeah, with the Netflix deal because it does still exist. For those who don't know, outside of the U.S., sure, Peacock only has U.S. content for WWE. I know you can't tell by watching it and watching the programming, but that will now all ship to Netflix. Will all of it go with it? Who knows? Is is Hulk Hogan rock and wrestling going to go away when Hulk Hogan does something terrible again? Who knows? And, that, know? and that's going to yeah. happen yeah. very likely when, when the Peacock deal ends in 2026 here domestically. I think they're all going. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I, I mean, because people used to ask me, why don't you have the WWE Network? Mm -hmm. And and I would say I, I've had the WWE Network <clears throat> for years before it existed. It's just in three or four different bookshelves in my house, <laughs> you know, because that... Mm -hmm. If you pay for the and anyone that's paid for the WWE Network again, I, I don't dog you for it. Can't beat it for the value. That's for oh, damn sure, without a doubt. And, and everything's convenient. It's in yeah, one place. They yeah. give you exclusives. Yeah. But but here's the thing: you don't own any of that. You're mm -hmm. renting it. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they take it away, you it's pay fun. ten dollars a month in hundreds and thousands of dollars. Now they take it away. What do you have left? So I gave a friend of mine when WWE Network happened. I had all the pay per views we taped on VHS from yeah. all the years, like boxes all. I pulled out things that I knew that WB was not releasing or had edited. Like, say, I had an Eddie Guerrero tribute. I had, um, like, the ECW One Night Stands. I knew the music wasn't intact. Right. If you, you want old ECW, watching any, any old ECWs, uh, sponsorships and graphics have been overlaid. When they started taking away the WWF logos mm -hmm. terribly mm -hmm. from those shows. And it was so god-awful, right? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of reasons to do that. I wish I didn't give those tapes away. <laughs> I sure. don't know how much they'd work right now, but still, sure, you, you know, could, you could still attempt to transfer them or whatever the case is. So, yeah, yeah. but but there's so much footage like that out there now mm -hmm. that's that maybe isn't being preserved and isn't even available legally. You know, yeah, you have yeah. to dig through the, the the scours of the internet, like. Who owns Memphis Wrestling? You know what I mean? Like, I think you own three episodes and no one's even told you. Like, that's that's <laughs> that's how messed up the rights are. Yeah, um, you're, you're explaining this to me one day. It's wild. There, there, yeah, there, there's workarounds and there's loopholes that I'm working on to where I can start selling it soon. But, but like, WB is never going to officially put that out because it's so muddy. Um, there's certain things that I won't get into details now because it'll uh, spoil some future plans. But certain companies that WB has bought the libraries for... Mm -hmm. They haven't bought everything. They bought maybe they bought a lot. Certain, but... they, they bought certain episodes or a number oh, of hours or yeah. a certain show. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. they didn't buy like the bankruptcy rights to the company to get everything. Yeah. So there's stuff out there that if you know where to look. And and you know, we've done compilations this year. We've done one on Harley Race, one on Andre the Giant, two on the Von Erics. And uh still to come, we've got uh, uh in the upcoming months, we've got Ric Flair. We've got Eddie Einhorn's IWA, which, if you're unaware, was the first attempt to have a national televised promotion in 1975, backed by Eddie Einhorn, who I think went on to be vice president of the Chicago White Sox, something like that, whatever the Chicago baseball team, hmm. baseball team was at the time. But it's a very rich man, a businessman, investor. Um, and, and to experiment a little bit, we're, we're planning on something with the Young Bucks to see if a more modern audience will support it. Um, and, and all those titles are available digitally as well. ProvisingLibrary.com is primarily digital, mm -hmm. but the DVDs allow it to travel to a place that digital can't, right? It allows me to, uh, uh, have an eBay store, to have a Mercury store, to have, mm -hmm. to go on the road with these things to the towns and, and, and meet these fans who say, man, I remember when my dad saw Andre when he was a kid and he told me this, this, and this, or mm -hmm. man, the Von Erichs, hey, did you see that movie? What did you think of it? You know, and, and to start these conversations and, and, and to rekindle this passion in fans and they feel like they're getting something special because, you know, uh, uh, looking at things, it's, it's, it's they'll see this lineup and like, wow, I never knew this happened. I never knew, you know, Harley went here and wrestled this guy. I never mm -hmm. knew, uh, um, you know, this upcoming Flair set, we've, we've got a Ric Flair versus Ricky Steamboat match that I don't know if it was ever televised. It's not from Jim Crockett. It's not from WCW. It's not from, it's certainly not from WWF. Um, but this stuff's out there and, and people don't know because nobody's been able to curate it pro properly and mm -hmm. present it properly in an organized way. And um, I, I, I want to be able to put it out. There. I want to be able to save and preserve what's left. Because think about it too. Um, 
so much of the TV back in the territory days wasn't saved. Yeah. Big, um, big, well, big problem with Pittsburgh when we were researching the yeah. Pittsburgh stuff. It got yeah. taped over because yeah. videotape was so expensive back then. You, yep. You'd take the tape, you'd bicycle it to all your towns, and then you'd record over and, because nobody saw value in it and back there, then. there's no value in replays. There was yeah. no value in catalogs at the time because nobody saw that future happening of, of, of easy duplication. I just bought uh, 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 from a collector, uh, I think about 700 hours of Portland wrestling TV. Um, most of that came from the private collection of the late great Playboy Buddy Rose. Mm-hmm. So, so the promoter, Don Owen, wasn't even saving the shows. One of his talents was recording it off television. <laughs> and that's the only reason we have it today. That's wild. Um, but yeah, like, think of all these legends that, that I've named. And like in 2025 and 26, you know, uh, uh, all things willing, I want to do a Terry Funk set. I want to do yeah. a Jerry Lawler yeah. set. I want to do a Kevin Sullivan set. Yeah. I want to do, you know, all this stuff to put this out there because how many people are huge Roddy Piper fans and never saw anything he did in Portland? How many yeah, people are huge, you always hear about it? How many people are huge Macho Man fans and never saw anything he did in his dad's own promotion? Yeah, or yeah. in Memphis, except for maybe people have seen like the cage match with Waller, stuff like that. Um, it's out there, but uh, I want to be able to package it together in a way that people can can feel like they have something tangible, they have something worthwhile, something they can hold on to forever. And a legitimate piece of history. And and there's matches we put on here that have never been released, mm. you know. Um we we've we've dug out and found Japanese TV feeds. We have found torrents, we have found um, you know, uh, bootlegs, we have found uh, 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 garage sales, we have found, we have been looking long and hard at anywhere this footage can be to just bring it back and 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 Bring it to where people will appreciate it and love it. And uh, you can see a lot of those great titles there. Uh, we, we just started putting up episodes of Kansas City TV, uh, mm-hmm. courtesy of Justin Race. Um, I, I want to get every single territory. Uh, probably won't get New York, but I want to get every other territory <laughs> represented in some form or fashion because there's always some bleed over, right? Like I yeah. can't, I can't touch AWA, but like AWA guys worked in Chicago for Bob Loose. We got Bob Loose footage. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, uh, Obviously, I don't own Jim Crockett, but Flair is the traveling champion. He went yeah. everywhere, yeah. you know. Like yeah. I, 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 uh, uh, Florida is owned by by Stanford, but there are certain uh, features and 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 projects that were put into place before Mike Graham sold that library that are still mm-hmm. out there. So th- th- there's so much out there to bring to people, and I want to I want to put it all in one place. I want to put as much of it on DVD as I can if, if the audience will have it, and. Wrestlers need it because you can learn so much from watching, you know, back then mm-hmm. people do things that no one does now. You do it now. It'll look brand new. Good. And I think fans deserve to see it because there's a whole world out there and, and history is not just written by the winners. History is written by uh, uh, the, the people that survive, the people that keep work, putting the work in. Right. And, and, and the counter, uh, uh, Shane Douglas said this to me the other day, the, the, the counter for misinformation is more free speech. So if something's out there, the, the narrative that you're, you're not uh, you're not digging, what do you do? You shout it down. There's a whole wrestling world out there that you're not going to hear about in the mainstream companies, and I want to present it to everybody. There you go. There you go. Do you feel like, and I'm sorry, but do you feel like there's more like territorial of these tapes like there was back in the day where it's like, like in New York there is, or in, in the Northeast, there's this one group that has all these tapes, like in just pretty much like what it was in the territorial days for wrestling. Do you find like there's just that group of people that hold on to their babies like that, like the the footage of that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think there's always sentiment of value there. I I, mm-hmm. I, I think I think there's probably gold mines. In, in, in someone's basement right now, we don't know about. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's some old Schrodinger's basement. There's some old grandma <laughs> somewhere that 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 uh, uh, is is sitting on you know every episode of Memphis TV that ever happened, and she's like, I hated that damn Bill Dundee, <laughs> and, and 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 she's holding on to that because she does she doesn't know, you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's so much as as geographic as it used to be, but it definitely is segregated, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, where there's collectors out there that may have this or that, and 
don't realize that it can be monetized or, or, or whatever. Like, I mean, or have the means or yeah. the idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and Herb Simmons in St. Louis, uh, uh, he, he got the St. Louis Library from Larry Matisik when when Larry passed. He was the old St. Louis announcer, and Larry got it from Sam Mushnick, uh, the legendary promoter there. So there, there, there's this this trail that goes down. But Herb wasn't really doing a lot of it outside of like his own podcast and his own like St. Louis Hall of Fame, his mm-hmm. wrestling club down there. He, he runs a great promotion down there, and he's very active in Cauliflower Alley. But like he, he he's not that type that is really in tune to what the possibilities are in 2024 with DVD, what the vastness is of the digital scape. Um, but, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm thankful to say, like, uh, 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 thanks to what we've been doing, like Herb gets, you know, and he's, I'm not paying for a condo form or anything, but he gets, he gets small payments every month as a result of this. And so do the Savoldis and so does Kevin Kleinrock and Les Thatcher and so many people that I work with. Um, and if there's something out there, uh, I want to see it. If, if, if it's not available anywhere else. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of lost footage. If I can get rights, I, I, I will sell it. If I can't get rights and I think it's 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 lost and dead and buried, I might put it on my YouTube. I mean, mm-hmm. we just found it. Not we, but like the human race just found a George Hackenschmidt match. You saw that, right? Yeah. For, on Twitter from 1908. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh Boggles the mind, mm-hmm. you know. Who knows what else is out there? If, if we can watch wrestling from 1908, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's crazy. And, and even back then, you could see they put all the fans on the hard cam side. They knew even back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the hard cam, brother. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, just just to watch Andre the Giant in a Hawaii battle royal with like <laughs> Tatsumi <laughs> Fujinami and Don Morocco, Love it. Andre and Bundy, and a, they're in the WWF at the time, but they go down to Hawaii to work for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the rocks, uh, grandmother. grandmother. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so they're doing the colossal jostle on NBC Saturday night's main <laughs> event. And then a few weeks before or after that, they're doing the six man with Kevin Sullivan down in, in Hawaii, mm-hmm. like things like that. that will blow people mind. They don't know what happened. And I love finding that. And I love saying like, here, like you enjoy this just as much as I have, because, you know, wrestling is something that should be celebrated, should be loved. And, Mm -hmm. uh, the territory system was so, so in the weeds that there's no way you could know about everything. And I'm still learning. I'm loving finding things I never knew existed. And, uh, I'm just having a blast. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, editing video. And, and I, today I voiced Ric Flair versus Bruiser Brody. I, th- I think I saw the tweet about that. Yeah, yeah. like how? Like I, uh, for when we did the Andre set, I, I voiced Andre versus Nick Bockwinkle. Mm-hmm. How does that make sense? Who the hell am I? Um, it's a hell of a lot more fun than um, running a live show. I'll tell you that. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, Joe, it's always great to see what the hell you're working on. It's it, I love hearing the stories about how you're finding everything. You know. And uh, in, in prowrestlinglibrary.com, go check it out. I need to catch up. There's a lot of stuff in there. I haven't, I haven't, since I've, it's been a while since I've worked on a DVD for you. So, yeah, <laughs> I, and there's more to, and, and there's so much stuff we're doing that's just digital only, like uh, any of the TV episodes, like Wrestling Titans or Kansas City TV. Yeah. Uh, we just started running uh, uh, the Rock Parsons Classic All Star Wrestling, hosted by his son Adam, who's a great kid. Um, I, the fun clip you'll, I, I, I don't even know where it's from. But there's there's a brawl going on in the ring, and just the canvas is imploded. It, it's it's, <laughs> it, it's like they're in a waterbed. It, it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, just random stuff like that. But uh, uh, yeah, prowrestlinglibrary.com, five hundred hours of digital content, and a lot of the heavy hitters are on DVD too. So like check it. it out. Like it. Go check it out. And uh, we we have a lot of commentaries from the chat room. We're gonna get back to that after this break. We'll be right back. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like to discuss from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to a gay and his NB on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back. Wrestling Mayhem Show. The original recipe, Riz, is here. It's been a long week. 
Dobrovich and the original recipe, Joe Dombrowski. <laughs> I feel like it's more happy. I mean, with your KFC affinity, it feels more appropriate. I love yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's why I thought of that because I was doing the thing and I was like, how about this too? I, I, I think I had you on my mind. Hey, I'm more enjoyable than all 11 herbs and spices. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's what's on the grinder that's profile, the- right? <laughs> it is now. Jeez. Anyway, um, anyways, you got some comments in the chat room, so I wanted to touch this first. Uh, Dave Ponder says, uh, "Bring back laser disc." <laughs> there you go. I'd have no. I mean, know where we start with something like that. You know. You know what I've been contemplating though. I've been contemplating doing vinyl. I, I don't know which. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, for my operatic album. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I've, I've been contemplating um, putting something on like a limited release VHS. I don't know what. Just to see what happens. TNA did that a couple years ago and they yeah. sold out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So uh, there might be something there. If it wouldn't suck to do so long, like maybe the first Brian Pillman show episode or show, hmm. memorial show. I think that would be a nice, like, you just do the first one. Right. Because it's the shortest. I like the way you speak. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. <laughs> well, I should remember when I did a DVD. Uh, so, um, but no, like seriously, like like that that one thing because it's like, oh, you have a VHS of this on your shelf, or it's like sealed, or- like what, like the th- one thing I remember from just getting into VHS are those like compilations of the weirdest wrestling sh- wrestling matches. Oh, like the unusual matches with like yes. gators and shit I saw on your shelf one time. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. There was the uh, crocodile death match. Yeah. There was the piranha death match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Big Japan's done some weird shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. There. Uh, I, I bought a tape lot last year just for my personal collection, not for anything to sell. But uh, one of them was just labeled uh, like wrestling strangest moments. And it was just, you know, mm-hmm. like a homemade label. So I have no idea what's on it. I have no clue. Probably it's, porn. At, at some point, I'm going to watch it. And, and it. Even if it's stuff I've already it's seen. It's going to scar you. It's going to be fun. It's going to scar yeah. me in a fun way. Ah, uh, yeah. Because, Just like going to the Gathering of Jugglers, where it's like, yes! I told you, you need to do this. <laughs> People don't understand the fun of just picking a tape out of a box and not knowing what the hell's on it and oh, just going on a ride. Love you know? it. You should like do a Twitch channel where you do that. I might. You know, I you might. Know? I, I've also thought about, and this will be a tech conversation we can have off air, but I've also thought about selling on what? I hear that's a big thing. That's they were so too. I didn't die. They were the, I learned of whatnot from the WrestleCon in Dallas because they advertise it a lot. Oh, okay. It's the first I had heard of it. And I know it's still been kind of a th- I've seen it pop up on some other promotions mm-hmm. I've done. So yeah, that, but I've never it, it's a trading thing, right? It's kind of like it's own eBay or something. It's like, like a that. live, yeah. you can like live sell. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. yeah. Like it's built for that. So I told you, man, QVC, QVC thing. That might be your thing. Hey, I, the whatnots. I, I do a mean Don Weston impression. I, exactly right we've seen the video right <laughs> if you haven't go watch the video we had saw on wrestling mayhem show i think we put it on ours was it ours yours i can't remember what we did well, hey, <laughs> if, you didn't, put, if you didn't put it on yours that's on it's you, somewhere on, on the online. internet it's yes. somewhere on the internet just search our name uh tina says it's refreshing to have joe to have you as a bridge uh to me to her uh some previous commentaries for gcw fell short with that a, a, a bit a, again very inside jokey and stuff and not really yeah. like they weren't announces they were just kind of part of the joke yeah, yeah, and I, I think it's a difference between um, insulating your product and yeah. just talking to the people who are already there yeah. Yeah. versus bringing new people in. And anytime I do a broadcast, whether it's MLW, whether it's JCW, whether it's you know uh, an independent I've never been before, my job is always to uh, assume somebody's watching for the first time and to make sure they can follow along. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how you grow your audience, you know. And, and, mm-hmm. and if you as a viewer. Uh, think you're smarter than me or think that uh, I'm not, you know, uh, giving the gravitas that I should, then I'm not doing my job. There's no point in mm-hmm. me being there. Yeah. And we're all wasting each other's time. So uh, thank you for saying that. I'm, I'm glad mm-hmm. that uh, I was able to, to help somebody discover it. And then Tina in Seattle also, I think uh, she's responding to when we were talking a little bit about Heartland and the the, the memorial shows, mm-hmm. the Pillman memorial shows. Okay. Uh, was, you know, Memories of Home. Um and I think she's asking, was that particular show at Norwood High School shown? And I know you have three volumes of Heartland now. I'm what because she, I think she, she 
she would did video on some of those and i've been we've been wondering okay. if so, you have some of her work in your collection <laughs> i think norwood high school was one of the pillman shows yeah if, if I'm oh correct. that must be it yeah because it's all yeah. four of them right all four of them yeah yeah, yeah part of that set the, the second year we, we don't have the full event but we have all the surviving 40s that i know of mm-hmm. again until i find that old lady with stuff in her basement who knows <laughs> um but uh but yeah we got all, all four pillman events mm-hmm. and um Bonus documentary, all, all kinds of fun stuff. I, I, I preserved as much of it as, as, as we possibly could and uh, mm-hmm. put it out there. So, yeah, it's there for the masses. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she, I think she's seen well when I put it up on screen. But there's an IWA on, on your site. Is that she's asking? If, is that the one that featured the Poffos in an early beginnings of Macho Man match? There, there is some. Uh, uh, so ICW was the Poffos company. Yes in uh like lexington and and they were kind of the outlaw company running in in memphis mm-hmm. i i do have icw lost tapes on there i do have uh a few other releases that i think have some icw footage on there so there's definitely some papa there's definitely some early macho man on there mm-hmm. um not as much as i'd like but uh but but the, the day is still and there's a lot of iwas the the einhorn iw uh, iwa <laughs> that i'm releasing there's an iwa japan i'll be doing some stuff with in 2025 mm-hmm. um not to mention all the independent iwas mm-hmm. so a lot out there uh matt who does all the great gifts on social media uh, we love uh you feel it feels like you get a greater level of appreciation of a piece of media whenever you have a physical form become so desensitized by all the digital media yeah you get like the fire hose and it's yeah. just like oh it's just another thing you know and there is like you know it happens with a lot of media I think it happens with a lot. Like, like it's not even just with wrestling oh yeah it yeah, happens yeah. with like video games yep like the biggest thing over here is like like with game pass and mm-hmm. stuff like that it and just kind of like what he, uh, Joe was saying, like those games go away. I like I w- those; they don't stay there forever. I was pontificating with somebody a couple of days ago. I think this was. I think this went while we're watching the pay per view on Saturday night, and I remembered the oh, why didn't we like spend so much time with X, Y, and Z thing, like kind of thing. And I was like, I was think, and I drew back to, I was like, you realize, like growing up, a lot of us had three channels. Wrestling was probably on Sunday morning. And instead of the internet to fill all those gaps, I had a video game magazine and a wrestling magazine that came in every month. And I would pour over those over and over again for the month because that's all I had coming to me to get more of this thing that I loved to follow. I think that's one thing that that this generation misses out on mm-hmm. and won't un- ever understand is that anticipation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Monday night raw goes off the air and Oh my God, it's crazy. We'll see you next week. And then, Oh my God, I got to wait. See what happens next. Mm-hmm. You know, you had to wait five, six days for the weekend shows or you found, uh, uh, one of the first tapes that I ever got that was outside of like the mainstream wrestling was, uh, IWA Japan, Kawasaki dream, the death match tournament, mm-hmm. Terry Funk and McFoley. Um, just to see that and like it's it's in like grainy Japanese lettering on the cover and like there's a, a bunch of bloody faces on it. It, it just oh feel God. it feels dangerous. <laughs> it feels illegal, right? Yeah. It feels like you're not supposed to watch it. And then you get it, it might be like fourth generation, it's got tracking issues, you gotta squint <laughs> to see it. But you appreciate it that much more because you had to work to get it. Mm-hmm. And it's great that everything is, is is at the drop of a hat and I could I could literally just never leave my house and just watch wrestling on a loop and never see the same thing twice, but you don't appreciate it as much because mm-hmm. it's, it, it's at your fingertips instead of something you got to scour for. Um, awesome. Hey, also from the chat real quick, I don't know if they're out there, but shout out to our friends at warrior wrestling that apparently uh, popped in on the YouTube. I uh, just said all of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so even you Riz, apparently <laughs> I don't think you went to Chicago Thanks. with us. Man, those Chicago were good. I miss warrior wrestling. I miss so warrior wrestling bad too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll take it. Uh, I'll, <laughs> Riz I'll take misses warrior, warrior wrestling too. Yes. yes exactly. Hey, but we, we are the soundtrack and the eyes and ears of so much of those broadcasts. I know. And, I know. Uh, Principal Steve and uh, and Dominic and the whole team out there it always did such a great job. They're doing cool stuff yeah. though. I mean, I it, it, I've been seeing the videos pop up of of you know doing the breweries, the bounce park they did a show in. <laughs> did you see that? I did. <laughs> you know what the best part is, is I don't think they book Frank the Clown anymore. So really, we all win. I mean, yeah, yeah in the we end, all win, right? Mm-hmm. So 
Um, God, I think I saw him in the distance WrestleMania weekend or something. <laughs> it's just like and it brought back ran. all the memories. You well, ran. at least I didn't like feel like I needed to throw up like that one show in Grand Rapids. Were you on that show? When I almost threw up in the middle of the show. <laughs> I think so, yeah. And it was during a Frank the Clown. St- it always is. It was so. I was like, I li- like, and I couldn't let that go on social media. I'm like, I literally had to ask for a puke bucket during, like, legitimately. It <laughs> it turned out for me for a different reason that was really peculiar. But it was just like, what are the, what's the timing here? You know, um, so That's why you're a pro. Yes, yes. I remember when he called our footage WCW Thunder when we couldn't find somebody in the crowd. Because <laughs> they fought on the crowd and into the dark, and we're like, we can't see anything, guys. And he just like, it's an old WCW Thunder out there. <laughs> I was like, fuck you, Frank. <laughs> I was so bad. Oh. Bless his heart. <laughs> oh, my God. I was supposed to talk about Survivor Series in this segment, but I kind of don't care right it's, now. Yeah, I don't it, know. It's, we got war games this week. It's weekend. happening. It's going to be great. Um, inner workings, Paul Heyman, CM Punk. Oh my God! <laughs> Everybody, men, grown men are crying again. Um, <laughs> or whatever the case may be. But no, there's I, so many people doing a lot of deep dives on a oh, lot of professional wrestling. Oh my God! When you start seeing, like, you know, like every time there's a Marvel trailer, somebody goes in and tries to go and dissect every little thing in the background and what it could be and how it relates to the Paul Heyman wink. Paul Heyman wink. Like, did you see Paul Heyman wink? Did you see him wink? Kind of, you see that wink? Yes. Yeah, you see the, wink the one Jay? where the one where Paul Heyman is wearing the same, the same suit that is, Solo Sokoa used to wear. Like, what the hell are we doing? I love that though. It's I, so that, great. That's, that's perfect. That, that's, that's such a far cry from from being spoon fed everything. Yes. And feeling like you're an idiot for watching it, even though you're not supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it gives people a reason to pay attention. Mm-hmm. It, it shows you the details matter. And I think one of the biggest problems was just how superficial everything used to be. Mm-hmm. And everything was in a four-week cycle. You build your PLE, and then it happens, and then we forget everything that happened and move on. We just built a match that doesn't even and, happen on Survivor Series. It's going to have a Saturday Night's main event between uh, Cody and Kevin Owens. I don't even think they're on the show this weekend. No, they're not. Right? Like, and it's a big four. Like, like and, that's how much damn talent you have. Exactly. Why have a half-assed world championship that is obviously going to be filler thing because you have two war games matches that everybody's really there for. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're so good at spreading that out, and it's not a predictable. Hey, we have a raw SmackDown. It's just like, oh, we'll just have this blow off over here. We'll have this blow off over here, and then like, you know, it's like the structure of those shows is so much more interesting, right? Yes, and it's and it's smarter because as something else is cooling down, there's something right there yes. ready to heat up. Yes, yeah. absolutely, and like. And going back to like the backstage segments, you're seeing, you're trying to look now hmm. in the background for other other segments happening in the background of the segment that you're watching. It's and that, you're trying it's to that, see like if there's any background, like any little any little um, detail you can find. Um, it's in the culture, but this is that comic book writer they hired. They this hired is, a comic book writer a couple years ago as a continuity expert. Mm-hmm. That's it. That, it's very this, much this is, like uh, it's the uh, kind of thing when you're watching Marvel movies. Is the kind of thing when, like, when you're watching the comic book and something that you notice pays off. Oh, I remember that thing from 13 epi- issues ago, and that came together here. You get the little Stanley asterisk that says "Remember Troop Relievers." That's yep. the only thing missing from WWE is a little it's, like Triple H, like, "Hey guys, remember when this happened?" You know, uh, it's very. <laughs> It's very uh, video game like as well, what, like mm. having Easter eggs pop in and out yep, of yep. different cir- circumstances, and going like, "Oh, is that Freddy Fazbear back there? Huh, that's cool." Uh, and oh, you can press a little button here, and it goes, it honks. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you see something like last week, there was the segment with uh, Kofi and Xavier Woods. One thing I didn't notice, internet noticed, was the chain that Kofi was wearing mm-hmm. had a little emblem of the Majin from Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. That's why everybody has this, like, Kofi's the one that's going heel thing. But then, this week, Xavier Woods, like, they, they both had different Dragon Ball Z stuff on. Uh-huh. Uh, 
Kofi had on Goku. And, and Xavier he, had black uh, Goku from the yes. Super Series, which is like evil Goku. So it's like they, I, I 100% know Xavier Woods is planning this. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. He's doing this bit by bit, and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. what's drawing me to this now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then now that pulls in your little geekdom is like, I know Dragon Ball. I know this yeah. means this. I know like you're layering on top of layering. It's like, ah, it's reference. like a damn onion of storytelling. Great. So, but my God, the crazy wall keeping the story together in the back <laughs> has got to be amazing. That is yes. like a Word document. I don't want to see Freeform, one of those new whatever the hells. We need a sledgehammer in the corner to note the Triple H mark. Oh my God. If there's a, what was it? I got a DVD of the original X Men movie. It was 1.5. And if there was a deleted scene that could be integrated into the movie in that moment, a little icon like an X popped up in the corner. You hit the button on your remote and it went to the, it loaded that scene instead. Okay. Like the extended scene of like Scott and Logan talking, you know, after, you know, after Gene left the room kind of thing. And, you know, stuff like that. Like just, yeah. Like that kind of thing. Um, I want that. <laughs> Especially with my DVR, this shit. You know? Uh, um, or note that for later. Explain this to me later. Oh my god, it's all it's all it's all Dragon Ball gifts on the side here. I yep. just noticed that. Yep. I, I saw that too. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> somebody put it next to ne- like next to each other of, of the game and or the 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 cartoon and that. It, that's so good. Anyways, war games are gonna be great. It's gonna be a war games. There's gonna be a lot of stories. Punk's back, so we don't have to have that happen again. Uh, <laughs> also, the Punk versus Owens match is going to be amazing. Punk versus Owens? Are we setting like, that up? Oh, no, no it, it, it's, it's it's bound to happen now. I mean, I hope, kind of in general, but like I can't remember where the beef came from. But I mean, I just want. Well, he's joining guys. Roman. Oh, so it's another guy he's not going to like he's, just because he's just going to hate everybody that's teamed back up with Roman, which means we're going to have another go around with Sammy. We're going to have another go. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. I got you. I got you. So I like that. I like that. And also there's like this element of Kevin Owens is not wrong. He's not like there's a very Thanos was right vibe to it. Well, I mean, the best villains believe they're right. Mm-hmm. Right. The, the, and not just in wrestling, but but in so many areas of pop culture. Absolutely. I mean, the the best villains have a grounded, rational point of view. They just either, you know, they take it too far. Yep. Or they have flawed logic to it. Yeah. Or whatever the case. Something that makes the audience go, oh, well, maybe he's got, oh, no, that's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then you're off the boat. I was with you till yeah. this point, you know. Exactly. But but it, it's, it's grounded in some type of logic that, you know, it, we don't need the 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 uh, old school, you know, uh, uh, comic book villains twirling their mustaches, tying the girl to the train tracks, right? No, it no, can no, be no. more nuanced. I mean, we could do that. Uh, we could. Well, I mean, you might be. I know you do some shady sh- uh, stuff in Western New York, so you might be doing that already. But uh, I, I think it's a, just a situation where um, the more nuanced uh, that character is, the more realistic it is. Because there isn't black and white in the world. Mm-hmm. There are shades of gray. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, you, you could name the the most evil person you can think of that you know right now. Maybe they love animals. You know, maybe they read <laughs> orphans on weekends. You don't know, but it's there's always that nuance there that takes you on that journey. Absolutely. Um, so either way, while we watch the Survivor Series, I'm sure we'll tweet about it or something. It's a 6 o'clock start time, too. Really? Yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern time. That's interesting. That's... I'll be on the road is when, there a when this happens. Then? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's also it's also my birthday that day. I'm assuming that's why they're doing this. <sighs> Happy Survivor Series Day. Why, yeah. thank you. Yes. And Survivor Series to you. And a War Games to you, too. And a war ga- yes. <laughs> Merry War Games to all. <laughs> Merry War Games to all. Well, one day you can celebrate one way you can celebrate, maybe when you get back from your trip as our friends on Slice on Broadway. They've done some birthday pizzas for us before and our friends, sometimes in the shape of Hello Kitty. Uh, so this is true. And also, uh, they've been supporting in the show we got the pepperoni pizza here joe's enjoyed some of it here uh perfect pepperoni pizza supporting pittsburgh podcasting new york city style yins are made so many locations around the city don't kick in the door podner sending us pictures mm-hmm. last week um but i also they don't know this i'm starting oh, a new no. campaign for them because i had a conversation with a fellow on the phone the wonderful uh-huh. people of slice on broadway and they said rico we need we can get this into rico's here and i was like because i was like I thought it would be great tonight if we had like a Thanksgiving feast pizza, right? 
a little bit of turkey, mm. a little bit of stuffing on it, maybe some cranberry in the crust, you know, you know, something like that. You know, like like they like they they used to do these kind of pizza inventions good, there, right? They, you know, they also have good hoagies. They got some ho- oh, that, oh you can make my a hoagie god, it could be a Thanksgiving too. dinner hoagie. Oh, that's they're, even better. Thanksgiving dinner hoagie. Yeah, like, like, then I walk in, it's like I've been thinking about this for the last twenty five minutes for <laughs> a cup of pizza. Yeah. And don't you guys have some kind of ham? He's like, Well, we got Capicola. I'm like, That's ham. That's ham enough for me. Yeah. That's a holiday Christmas pizza starting point. Because I'm like, what? You got like like Hawaiian pizza or something here, right? He's like, oh, you do the Capicola. I'm like, oh, well, there you go. I was like, get this Enrico's here. We'll be messaging him. And that's why I'm asking you, Mayhem Nation, you're going to reach out. You're going to get on your X, bo- no, not Xbox. No, <laughs> Xbox. Xbox. What, what other social media you're on, go find Slice on Broadway. Did they update their social media yet? I hope they have. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Uh, oh, that's not that at all. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. What, what, what are you Go to SliceOnBroadway.com. Figure out which social media is there on these days. I don't know what anybody's on. You have to double check that now. Uh, do your due diligence. Hit them up and, and on, on whatever social media and be like, listen, holiday, pizza, ham, whatever you think of for, it was a Christmas. I can't remember what Christmas dinner is. It's the one without turkey typically, right? Ham. 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 Just ham. Just Chris, get your Christmas Just ham, a whole bunch of fish pizza, on one. Give me your turkey dinner hoagie. And and there you go. And then this we're going to help. Just make a sandwich, a pizza that has seven different dishes on it. It's perfectly fine. Seven fishes. Oh, it's an wait. Wasn't that an Italian thing too? That's an Italian thing. I thank you, the bear. Um, so I yell hands in the kitchen. Now <laughs> because of them, <laughs> I yelled hands the other day. I was like, you should have yelled hands if you needed me. It's like that's for plating. I'm like, it's still how what I respond to. Um, anyway, sometimes I yell hands when I'm doing production too. <laughs> so anyways, you slice too. on Broadway. The seven You're fishes of your. Too. Of your pizza ness, hopefully this holiday if Rico listens to this <laughs> and, and the people. Let the people know the pizza people. Okay. I got that out of my system here. I forgot to preview what we were gonna do. Because we're not gonna tell you what we learned from wrestling this week, guys. If you watch the social media, I actually put it out there with the wrestle turkey. What are you thankful for in pro wrestling this year? Pause for dramatic effect. No, like I, I've been trying to think of this like for quite some time. Uh, like wrestling in general has done a lot for me. Like I haven't thought about it as much, but like working wrestling, meeting wrestlers that I've that we've we've all worked with. Uh, doing all this stuff like the podcast and all that like i'm just thankful to be like that minute of a difference you're no you're you're a relatively known entity i always say we're a known entity in the wrestling business and you're part of that yeah including including that time you shunned hornswoggle yeah the one time i shunned hornswoggle swoggle i'm sorry (laughs) that wasn't my fault it was chachi's fault um, but like hearing like people actually liking the stuff that I've done, mm-hmm. especially on like going back to RWA this year mm-hmm. where like the whole, uh, super hentai and, uh, Riz- HL Supreme okay. thing. I'll put you over on this one. Riz yeah. has helmed the graphics department for RWA for the entire year. And yeah, most, I mean, I'd say you've done like 80% of the shows, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure that works with 10 shows, 11 shows. Um, so, but you, you, not only are you getting those names, right, but also like, um, super hentai's name was under, um, duress and trademark infringement. So there was a whole thing where somebody would come out and Preston Everest was coming out and was super hentai. So when he comes out and it says, no, no, no. You know how many jokes just popped into my head I can't say right now? I know, right? Yeah, I know, no, I know. You, yeah. you can't on this show, probably. Um, but okay, if, you, if, you go, if you go Riz, backstage to RWA, it Riz happens all will, the time. Riz has com- comedic timing of on the fly changing the graphic. Okay. Like backspacing. Yes, one letter at a time. and just typing in the correction as it's being corrected for the audience by handcuts. <laughs> Or okay. the dressler or something like that. Mm-hmm. For instance, I think Super Hentai, there's also a Super Hentai story. I think he was supposed to be the member of the Rumble. 
that yes. got replaced by, by cameraman Matt. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> to which you t- deleted everything. And then I put and a question mark after Matt yes. as well. I was like, wait, so, Matt? I don't know if you, uh, uh, Matt Carlins um, was submitted into the Rumble, Revenge, Re- Renegade Rumble, excuse me. Renegade Rumble. Uh, wrong promotion. And uh, uh, went in, came face to face with Malachi Gage. And uh, uh, Malachi rushed him. He, he actually has an elimination over Malachi Gage. Oh. Gets pulled yep. out. Crash the action got in the way. And then they ran. Well, that's on. a whole lot of dude. They ran. Out. It is a whole lot of dude. Whole and lot now he's dude. the RWA champion. Congratulations, Crash. Um, Not world champion. Heavy no, champion. don't say world champion around Quinn's around Quinn. <laughs> he gets so bad about it. And and, and, and Quinn's right too. <laughs> yes, he, he is. is. But, he is. Right. But that just makes us want to say it more. <laughs> <laughs> you damn rebels! Especially when we're in the chat room and know he can't touch us because <laughs> uh, he's a big dude. <laughs> so. Anyways, um, so no, Riz has been. I, I will, uh, as a side, I'm very thankful for people like Riz that make this whole experiment work. Because you know, pro wrestling. I just is, press a button, sword. They just try. Yeah, yeah. You're a, pro- a professional button pusher, right? That's what I do. All I'm right, like magnet, yo. And and Joe just talks on a mic. I know the words. <laughs> he does, I just say the words. <laughs> oh my god. Um... Dave Ponner is thankful that we had a final removal of Vince from the WWE TKO and the stories have gotten so much better. Also, AEW is the place for sickos. Happy we have a place. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Joe, what do you think? Yes. Uh, uh, In wrestling this year. Well, first, uh, uh, I will will tell you what I learned from wrestling. Okay. It's on my mind. I I will say... uh, I, I could I've learned that I could rescue and, and salvage uh, every promotion out of every country and every territory. I could find Frank Gotch's world title win from 1904. And even if I did that, I would not be as successful in life as something called the Rizzler. So unfortunately, uh, I, yeah. I, I, you, gotta, I know, you gotta know your limit. I know my limitations. In yes. This world. Yeah. I understand. I know. I know my place. Uh, but what am I thankful for in wrestling? Um I'm thankful for a few things. I'm thankful to see so many of my friends that are successful out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, to see somebody like Johnny Gargano on SmackDown every week. Oh my God! Yes, working with Alex Shelley. Uh, I w- I was there. I called their match in Cleveland at Turner's Hall for JT Lightning when Johnny was 19, uh, and he met Shelley, and he's referenced that on SmackDown. And, and now to see them together and still have that mentor mentee relationship. The three of them were on the first show I ever filmed for IWC. Yeah. God knew. Mm-hmm. Warms my heart to yeah. see uh, to see. Walking Wild, working with Rey Mysterio uh-huh. and doing the LWO thing. Oh my God! Uh, you know uh, Lee Moriarty and Ring of Honor. Um, congrats to Daniel Garcia for for yes. his win at the pay per view. Um, yes. You know I know Cole Carter's on the mend on the comeback. Mm-hmm. Um, our boy Tony Mamaluke on NXT a few oh, weeks ago, yes! right? Yeah. I popped when I saw that. <laughs> Tony Mamaluke there. Um, to see so many good people have have genuinely you know a great success. Um, I love that for them, and, and I love seeing uh, great talent and great people get rewarded. Um, I'm thankful for the business in general and how vibrant it is, how strong it is, how we can have four or five, six national companies, an international scene. Uh, no matter what your niche is, whether you like women's wrestling, whether you like deathmatch wrestling, uh, whether you like uh, uh, chain wrestling, whatever it is, there's a place for you. Mm-hmm. There's a place for it. Um, and I love that uh, 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 so many different areas of the, the sport are, 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 you know, selling out and breaking records and, and doing big things. You know, they say uh, a high title rise all ships. Mm-hmm. So hopefully uh, as things continue to, to, you know, go well up top, that benefits everybody. Um, and I'm just very thankful to be a, a small part of all that, you know, and, and to be able to have the freedom and the opportunity to, to, to do what I love and do what I want. And that's tell stories on so many levels. And whether that story happens, you know, uh, uh, live for MLW in New York city in two weeks, or whether it happened in 1975 at a Chicago baseball stadium. And I get to voice it now, you know, whatever the case is, I get to be a part of that. And I get to add my passion and my emotion and my love to these footage, this video, these packages, whatever the case is, and and share that with the world, and hopefully make them feel something just like it's made me feel something for thirty four years now, just about. 
So uh, uh, just thankful to be on this journey and and to be where I'm meant to be doing what I love. I, 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 I think I'm with you on some of the sentiments there, uh, kind of on a similar thing. I, uh, I, I kind of had a, a, you know, call a resolution or something at the beginning of the year that I wanted to lean into more of what I like to do and who I like to do it with. Um, I, uh, had a rash of, it wasn't only like, I, only a couple instances in pro wrestling, but more in some other lines of work in promotion, promotions and sports or whatever, where I was finding myself just getting into some really crappy situations with some of the productions that we were doing. And I'm just like, we, you know, I, I don't know if I needed to gatekeep or what it was or lean into the people more that, um, that I thought were doing really, really good things. Uh, to that end, I, I have, st- I know I've stated versions of this either here on Patreon over, you know, last few weeks, months or whatever. Um, I feel myself very fortunate to be in, um, I think very much on the high end and the low end right now of wrestling production. Um, I feel like we have, you know, on, on the high end, you know, again, very, very thankful for our working relationship with new Japan, you know, Missy's helping out with the streams again and, and really fortunate, you know, uh, that they bring us and do something, uh, when they need to uh, fill a hole here and there. <clears throat> but, um, you know, obviously, um, NWA Exodus is the most TV ready place I've worked with. And that's learning that organization, Joe, I know, I know you, this is old hat to you. You've seen these places like on this level, you know, for a while now, but, um, you know, other than, you know, Rich showing me at a warrior wrestling, you know, uh, how these kind of shows go, come together on the back end in the organization and how to make them run better in general. Like, you know, I was just getting little bits of that and, and maybe, you know, not every wrestling promotion is on like that whole page together. Right. And that's definitely happening at a place like, like they're, they're obviously getting people ready to go on NWA TV. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's been so like, and I've seen those people on other shows that we do with some of our partners. And it's like real, realizing how much they, just how they present themselves look light years beyond some people that we work with on a regular basis. Like that was a wake up call for me. Um, and to the point, like obviously low end, I don't want to call them low end, but you know, it's a training school, first of all, kind of promotion, but like, you know, we are doing that training school every week and we're trying to bring elements of what we're learning there. Cause honestly, the people we work with week to week with, I want them to be using this time in front of a camera, not only just know, learning to be in front of the camera, but learning to be in front of the camera the right way. And I think that's very important because I think I had a, I had to have a talking with some referees lately because I was like, listen, if you don't, you're not in the right position, you're in front of two or three cameras and it looks amateur. I think we're going to show your butt. Yeah. Is show your, it, I was trying not to put it like that, but it was like, this is amateur hour. Let's pretend we're professionals. And this is where the hard cam is. And I literally will show you a WWE match and where you should stand, mm-hmm. you know, like, because if you're going anywhere else, if you don't know how to do that, you ain't coming back. You know, and those are the shows you got to learn. That yep. Stuff and mm-hmm. just taking a little more like, you know, we're not just we're not just the crew just showing up to shoot whatever the hell happens in front of us anymore. You um, always got to treat it like a job, even when it's not, because if you don't, it never will become. one. Absolutely. And it can be a fun job, but it's still a job. Mm-hmm. And you got to make sure the work gets done and don't let the fun get in front of it. Uh, but no, it, it's, it, and again, we have really great partners. Everybody I work with, you know, is, you know, somebody I think is worth working with and, and really appreciate everybody that's in our, um, circle of productions. I don't know. There's a better way to put that. <laughs> so, uh, but thank you everybody that has worked with us here and let us, uh, 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 film your shows and put it out and get in front of the eyeballs for you from the chat room. At least one more from Matt Burge, true parents, pro. On the social media is thankful for having a platform that allows me to support all my friends to in wrestling and that allows me to express my creativity in many different ways. And that's it. You know, this and, you know, Matt and, and you know, I talked about like the video, uh, the promo video for 880. I love doing a show and just somebody with a better camera <laughs> doing a different job, put some stuff out on the Internet. I'm like, oh, my God, that makes that show look like trim. Like when I saw like video of a birthday party in a guy's backyard and it looked like <laughs> the most epic wrestling show you've ever seen 
Like they just did three matches for the kids' birthday party and and everything, and then we went and did a Halloween show later, and it was incredible. You know, it's just um, um, that really kind of goes to you know, Joe. We've talked about perceptions, everything. Yeah, right. Perceptions, and it's and and if you're you have the people with the cameras and the artistic style that makes your promotion look better than everybody else in town, uh, it just because that presentation 100%. that goes that goes a long way. Yeah, and and, and pe- people like Matt. Are, are, are really utilizing social media mm-hmm. the way I think it should be in, in terms of our business is you're not going to uh, complain about what you don't like or what you don't watch or just, you know, hate tweet for engagement that you see some people do amplify what you love. Yes. Put it out there, make those videos, make Especially those today. graphics, you know, uh, put everything out there that, that's going to help and enhance the people you want to support, the people you want to see get more eyeballs, because that's how it's going to work. It's going to be word of mouth. And mm-hmm. hate travels faster than love, unfortunately, yep. Yep. on the Internet. You don't want to feed into that and be part of that cesspool and quagmire and get people turned off on it. Give them something new, someone new that they should check out, and, and maybe you'll help your favorite wrestler make a new fan. Absolutely. You never know. You know, also, you never know who's watching. That's true. Anything from the lowest training show to, you know, an NWA NWA live stream or pay-per-view or whatever. You have no idea what eyeballs are on you. They're going to get you into the next thing. That's how I've done all my success. All of my biggest breaks started with happy accidents. It was never anything I intended to do. No. It set off a chain of events. Yeah. To get there. And and I, I tell people, I got to England because I knew Petey Williams' email address. Mm-hmm. I got to Ring of Honor because I befriended Jimmy Jacobs seven years earlier. I mm-hmm. got to MLW because of a <clears throat> chance phone call with Kevin Kelly. I got to AAA because I rented guardrails to Extreme Rising in 2012. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Nothing I do makes sense. <laughs> no. Nothing I do was on talent and merit. It just happened to be, hey, he knows words and doesn't it, but, drool but, on himself. But it's, it is also, you've, you've shown your talent and you've shown that you're not a shitty person to work with that comes like eventually that, yeah 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 but it's like you still need to it's hard to demo reel that you know yeah. hi i'm not a weirdo that directs wrestling you know because or, or i am a weirdo but i can be your kind of i weirdo. can be your kind yeah. of weirdo it's like yeah that's our kind of weirdo over exactly. there, there i can you make your weird look good it sounds like a relationship card, or actually, it does. Like, that actually yes. like you, you see, weird people just need to hire perpetually weirder people so they look normal by comparison. Mm-hmm. It's like the old Jim Cornette story where Ole Anderson told him, uh, "You were the shits when you started, but ever since, even shittier people have come up behind you, so you've just gotten better by comparison." Mm-hmm. That's that's people in wrestling with weirdness. Oh my god, that's. <laughs> no, not going there. Joe Dombrowski, thank you for coming by and talking some old. It, it, this is good. We don't. We haven't had a good eight, eight hour car ride to do this on for a long time. Hey, we'll change that. Come to Indiana with me this weekend. Oh, the, <laughs> dude, I'm I'm booked at the Jagoff uh, Holiday Parade this weekend. So um, let's the what? Uh, Who? That, don't, uh, don't get hot about it. Listen, listen. So, oh god, do we, uh, maybe I'll explain it on Patreon to you. Okay, uh, I'll be doing that. That'll be live on TripLive.com. Actually, in touch with our old buddy Justin Labar for that live stream. Labar! Labar! I want to yell that. I hope he's on the call that we're supposed to be having tomorrow so I can do that for him. He's like, hey, Jabrowski said, uh, has a message for you. Um, but anyways, um, jeez. And uh, what else is going on? Oh, uh, Wednesday night, of course, like I mentioned, 880 Wrestling at Penn Brewery in the city. Accessible as fuck if you're in the city. Um, and, uh, and of course, our friends up in uh, uh, Erie, Pennsylvania doing big league Pro Wrestling, John McChesney's gr- and, and company's group up there. A lot of great stuff there. Donovan Jagger, Pretty Boy Smooth for NWA Exodus Midweast. I, I, I can't remember what the name is. There's too many words. NWA Midwest Championship. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, it's he didn't late. Say anything. He, he just decided to say that. He said, he said thank you. You'll thank me later. Um, and you can check out all this stuff. Go check out our friends out there. Go to IndyWrestling.us. We have those shared over on the Facebook page. Um, whenever we see those things come up. And uh, and that's it. We'll be back next week. Facade the Neon Ninja will be back with us. Yes, we'll talk more Juggalo shit. Because uh, he's the longest person I've known from wrestling. From before wrestling in the Juggalo world. So we'll be we'll be uh, talking a lot about that too from a different lens. Thank you everybody. Patreon's happening. Uh, and uh, we'll try about, who knows? I'm going to explain a, uh, a, a fake uh, parade to Joe Dabrowski that we do in Pittsburgh now. Uh, it's not a fake parade. It's a <laughs> parade. It's kind of, it's a real parade. It's inverted. <clears throat> Don't look up your Jag off, not your average uh, uh, holiday parade on the internet. There's been two of them. Um, and, and 
we'll explain it. We'll see you guys next time. See you on Patreon. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.